Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Fortinet, Accelerate 18. Brought to you by Fortinet. Welcome to Fortin Accelerate 2018. I'm Lisa Martin with theCUBE and we are excited to be here doing our second year of coverage of this long-standing event. My co-host for the day is Peter Burris. Excited to be co-hosting with Peter again and we're very excited to be joined by the CEO, founder, and chairman of Fortinet, Ken Z. Ken, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Peter. Happy to be here. It's great to be here for us as well. And your, the title of your keynote was Leading the Change in Security Transformation, but something as a marketer I geeked out on before that was the tagline of the event, Strength in Numbers. You shared some fantastic numbers that I'm sure you're quite proud of. In 2017, $1.8 in billing. Uh, huge growth in customer acquisition, 17.8 thousand new customers acquired in 2017 alone. And you also shared that Fortinet protects around 90% of the global S&P 100. Great brands and logos you shared, Apple, Coca-Cola, Oracle. Tell us a little bit more, and kind of an, as, as an extension of your keynote, this strength in numbers that you must be very proud of. Yeah, I'm an engineer background. Always uh, like the number and uh, not only uh, we uh, become a much bigger company, we actually has a 25 to 30% global deployment in the network security space. That's give a huge customer base. And uh, last year, the sales grow 19%. And uh, we keep in uh, leading the space with a new product we just announced today, the FortiGate 6000 and also the FortiOS 6.0. So all this change in the landscape, and uh, like I said uh, last year, uh, we believe the space in the transition now, uh, they go to the new generation, uh, infrastructure security. So we want to lead in again, like we started a company 18 years ago uh, to get into what we call the UTM next gen firewall space. So we feel the infrastructure security is very important now, and uh, we want to lead in the transition and uh, lead in the change. So growth was a big theme, or is a big theme, um, and some of the things that were also interesting is another theme of, of really this evolution, this landscape. I think you and Peter will probably get into more of the technology, but give our viewers a little bit of an extension of what you shared in your keynote about the evolution, these three generations of internet and network security. Yeah, when I first started my uh, network security career, the first company uh, I was studying at Stanford University, I was in the 20s. And uh, it's very exciting, it's that uh, the space keeping changing and uh, grow very fast. It's uh, that's make me uh, keeping, have to learn it every day and that's what I like. And then uh, we started a company called Netscreen uh, when I was early 30, that's my second company. Uh, we call the first generation network security, which secured a connection into the trust company environment. And the uh, Netscreen is a leader, later being sold uh, for four billion dollars. And then starting in 2000, we see the space changing. Basically, you only secure the connection no longer enough. Just like uh, today, you only validate yourself, go to travel with a ticket, no longer enough. They need to see what's your carry, uh, what's, the, what's the luggage has, right? So that's where we call the uh, in, uh, application and content security, they call the UTM legend firewall. That's how Fortinet started. That's the second generation starting replacing the first generation. But compared to 18 years ago, since changed again. And nowadays the data no longer stay inside the company. They go to the mobile device, they go to the cloud, they go to all different application, go to the IoT, it's everywhere. So that's where the security also need to be changed and follow the important data, secure the whole infrastructure. So that's why we keep in talking from last year, this year, it's really the infrastructure security, the secure fabric is starting to get very important. And uh, we want to lead in this space again, like we did 18 years ago, start the Fortinet. So Ken, I'd like to tie that, what you just talked about, back to this notion of strength in numbers. Clearly, the bad guys that would do a company harm are many and varied, and sometimes they actually work together. Mm -hmm. So there's danger in numbers. Mm -hmm. Fortinet is trying to pull together 
utilizing advanced technologies, new ways of using data and AI and pattern recognition and a lot of other things to counter effect that. What does that say about the nature of the relationships that Fortinet is going to have to have with its customers going forward? How's that evolving? The idea of a deeper sharing, what do you think? Actually, the good guy also started working together now. Sure. And uh, we formed, uh, they call the Cyber Threat Alliance, the CTA, and uh, Fortinet is one other founding company with uh, five other companies, uh, <coughs> including Palato Network, Checkpoint, and uh, uh, McAfee, and also uh, uh, Cisco, there's a few other companies all working together now. And we also have, we call the Fabric Ready Program. Uh, which has a 42 big partner, including like IBM, Microsoft, Amazon, uh, Google, all these bigger company. Uh, because to defend the latest uh, news fabric threat, you have to be working together, and that's also protect the whole infrastructure. You also need a few company working together, and it's uh, because on average, every big enterprise, they deploy 20 to 30 different products from different company. It's uh, the management cost is the number one, it's the highest cost in the big enterprise security space because you have to learn so many different products from so many different vendors, and most of them competitor, and now even working together, not communicate together. So right. that's where we want to change the landscape. We want to provide how info infrastructure security can work in better, and not only partner together, but also share the data, share the information, share the intelligence. So fundamentally, there is a it's the relationship is changing very dramatically as a way of countering the bad actors by having the good actors work more closely together, and that drives a degree of collaboration, coordination, and a new sense of trust. But you also mentioned that the average enterprise is 20 to 30 broad-based security products. Every time you introduce a new product, you introduce some benefits, you introduce some costs, potentially some new threat surfaces. How is how should enterprises think about what is too many, what is not enough, when they start thinking about the partnerships that needed to put together to sustain that secure profile? Uh, like I said, in order to have the best protection today, you need to secure the whole infrastructure, uh, the whole cyberspace. And uh, network security is still the biggest and also grow very fast. And then there's the endpoint, and there's a, like a cloud security, there's a, all different application, email, web, and uh, all, the, all the cloud, all the IoT. Uh, so you really need to make sure all these different pieces working together, communicate together. And uh, the best way is really, they have a single panel of a management service. They can look at it, they can make it integrate together, they can automate together because today's attack can, f can, can happen within seconds when they get into the company network. It's uh, very difficult for human to react on that, right? So that's where how to integrate, how to automate this different piece starting to get so important. Uh, that's where the fabric approach, the infrastructure approach starting to get very important. Otherwise, you cannot react quick enough, effectively defend yourself in the current environment. And uh, on the other side, for your question, how many vendors they need to have, I feel the less the better, so they can, at least they have to work in together. If they're not working together, it will make it even more difficult to defend, because each part, they not communicate, they not react, they not automate, will make the job very, very difficult. And that's where uh, all this working together and the less vendors, they can all responsible for all their security, the better. So that's where we see some consolidation in the space. They do still have a lot of new company come up. Like you mentioned, there's a close to 2,000 separate security company. And a lot of them try to address the point solution. So we're just enough to start with the idea of data integration, secure data integration amongst the security platform. So enough to do to as little as possible, as few as possible to do that, mm -hmm. but enough to cover all the infrastructure. Yes, yes. Right. Yeah, because the data is all in the whole infrastructure now. It's no longer just have the trust environment and you know. Right. Because even inside the company, there's so many different ways you can access to the outside, whether by your mobile device or there's a multiple way you can connect on the internet. And uh, today in the enterprise, 90% connection goes to Wi-Fi now. It's not goes to the wire network. That's also difficult to manage. Uh, so that's where how to tie this together and uh, make it all working together is very important. 
So in the spirit of collaboration, collaborating with, with vendors, um, when you're talking with enterprises that have this myriad security solutions in place now, how are they helping to guide and, and really um, impact Fortinet's technologies to help them succeed? What's that kind of customer collaboration like? I know you meet with a lot of customers. How are they helping to influence the leading security technologies that you deliver? We always want to listen to the customer. They had the highest priority. They gave us the best feedback. And uh, like uh, <coughs> the presentation, they talk about there's a case from uh, Alarica, which is really they have a lot of branch office and uh, they want to use the latest technology and uh, networking technology, SD-WAN, and working together with security. Uh, that's really the new trend, and uh, how to make sure they have all the reliability, they have the flexibility, software-defined networking there, and also make sure the security also there handle the customer data. That's all very, very important. So that's where we're working very closely with the customer to respond to what they need. And that's where uh, I'm still very proud to be, uh, I'm no longer kind of engineer anymore, but we still try to build an engineer technology company. Mm -hmm. uh, listen to the customer, react quick, because to handle security space, cyber security, internet security, you have to be very quickly react for the change on the internet, on the application. Uh, so that's where follow the customer and give them the quick, best solution uh, is very, very important. On the customer side in, in EMEA, we talked about, that was talked a little bit about this morning, GDPR is around the corner, mm -hmm. May 2018. Do you, do you see your work, Portinet's work with, with customers in EMEA as potentially being kind of leading edge to help customers in the Americas and Asia Pacific be more prepared for uh, different types of compliance regulations? Yes, we, we see the GDPR as an additional opportunity it's an additional complement solution uh, compared to all the, <coughs> the new product technology will come up. And uh, they definitely give us an additional, uh, <coughs> uh, additional benefit, additional opportunity uh, to really helping customer protect the data, s make the data stay in their own environment. And uh, <coughs> at the same time, uh, internet is a very global sense and uh, how to make sure different country, different region working together is also very, very important. And, uh, but I think it's a GDPR is a, is a great opportunity to keep expanding the security space and uh, make it safer for the consumer, for the end user. So in the last minute or so that we have here, one of the things that Patrice Persh, your uh, global sales leader, said during his keynote this morning was that security transformation, this is the year for it. So in, in a minute or so, kind of what are some of the things besides fueling security transformation for your customers do you see um, as priorities and, and exciting futures this year for Fortinet, including you talked about um, IOT, that is a $9 billion opportunity. You mentioned the securing the connected card, a very cool car in there. What are some of the things that are exciting to you as the leader of this company in 2018? So we, we hold some basic technology none of the other company has, like a building security into a single chip. Uh, I also mentioned uh, like uh, some other bigger company like uh, Google starting building their TPU for the cloud computing, then NVIDIA, the GPU. So we actually started this vision 18 years ago when we started the company and the combined the best hardware and best technology with software, with service all together. Uh, so long term, you will see the huge benefit. Uh, that's also like uh, <coughs> translate into today. Uh, you can see all this uh, technology enable us to really uh, provide a better product, better service uh, to the customer, to the partner, and uh, we all starting benefit from all this investment right now. Yeah. Well, Ken, thank you so much for joining us back on theCUBE. It's our pleasure to be here at the 16th year of the event, our second time here. Thanks for sharing your insight, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, a great show.